Today we're going to look at the top 10 oil and gas field names. What's in a name? Well, it could be a location, it could be a fish, a bird, a god, a planet, or even a relative. How do we name oil and gas fields? Well, we begin our search for the best name with some of the candidates that we're going to present here. We're sure there are some crackers out there that haven't been featured in this top 10. So please add a comment below and come up with some suggestions and maybe a remake of this will get closer to the best named oil and gas fields. Here's our world map of trove coverage. I'm going to start in the North Sea. And here's the apocryphal tale of Shell's naming convention in the UK North Sea. Well, the story goes that when Shell found their first field, it was called A UK. And the idea was that they go B UK, C UK, but somebody realized by the time they discovered the sixth field, they would have some problems. The reality, well, it wasn't A UK, of course, it was Orc. And here's a picture of an Orc and underneath a Brent Goose. And you can see all of the names of these were actually featuring seabirds. We don't know some of them. If you can help us out and fill in the gaps, please leave them in the comments below. Now we're off to the US Gulf of Mexico. So this is the place to go if you want really interesting names. And uh, you can see here in this list that's flashing by, there are some really interesting names. But the one that we've chosen for this today is actually going to be Nearly Headless Nick. It's in the deep water Gulf of Mexico. It's just southeast of the uh, Delta House hub. And its name, of course, is derived from the Harry Potter film. And there is uh, John Cleese in the part of Nearly Headless Nick. Now, I um, don't know how they came up with these names, but I think it's a fantastic name. Staying in the Gulf of Mexico, another interesting name comes uh, from Mexico itself, and it's the Cantarell field. And in 2004, it was the second largest producing oil field in the world, producing 2.1 million barrels of oil per day. It's actually named after the fisherman, Rusindo Cantarell, who came across an oil slick back in 1961. So he reported this and received recognition and tributes for his discovery. He became a Pemex employee and the field was later named in his honour. So there it is, a fantastic complex. Now moving across to South Africa, and we touched on this in one of our recent videos on the Utanika Basin, and it's to do with the Patavisi Fairway. Uh, here's the, uh, the acreage down here, and if we home in on it, you can see the Padovisi Fairway. It actually gets its name from the fact it looked at the original mapping a little bit like a tadpole. And the naming convention for the subsequent prospects, and this was by Ranger Oil back in the day, was uh, to give them names of frogs. So Brulpada, Bullfrog, Leopard, there's Leopard Toad, and uh, there's the uh, Padovisi, uh, the tadpole. And here's our entries from Trove, and you can see for each and every one of these, um, we have lots of information available. Back to the North Sea, this time going across to Norway. And the story goes uh, again that in the early days for Norway, uh, there were five areas and it was Philips Petroleum. They named each of these five areas after fish. And um, so some of the names are listed there. But when, uh, when it came to E, they could only think of one name and that was Eel. And there was a number of prospects. So one resourceful manager went away and he decided because fish are sometimes identified by, by sonar, he decided to call it Echo Fisk. Hence the name Echo Fisk, which is uh, an absolutely amazing field. And I think you'll find if you watch the video we've done on that, that everything about it is, uh, is really very, very special, including 10 years of production incline very unusual so there's the front page of the video and uh, you can see that this is actually as one of our videos goes it's just constantly delivered we did it about 720 days ago and you can see that we've got over 3,000 views and it just continues each and every day to pick up more views so one place where there are many names for one single asset Turkmenistan gets our award for the most spellings and most different names that you can get for a single asset. And this can be very, very difficult for uh, databases to capture. In Turkmenistan, you have uh, fields or discoveries named in Russian, in Turkmen, 
they're anglicized, they're misspelled, uh, they're hyphenated at times and not at other times. So one of the examples here is one of the fields. And what we do within Trove is we capture all the variants so that they can all be found by simply searching on the field name. This is our favorite field in Turkmenistan. It's Devaza, uh, previously known as the, uh, the Door to Hell. And it's an interesting story. Back in 1971, they were uh, drilling a well here at this location when they encountered shallow gas. Now, in time, the, uh, the whole rig um, started to sink as a sinkhole developed. And worried about the escaping gas, uh, they decided to actually ignite this gas, the escaping methane, with the expectation that it would burn off in a few weeks. Well, this is the location of it here, right out in the desert in Turkmenistan. It's a tourist attraction these days. Why? Because it's been burning for over 50 years. There are moves afoot to try and see if something can be done about it, and the president wants to see if it can actually be shut off. The arrow here is highlighting a couple of vehicles, just to give you some idea of the scale of this thing. It's um, 200 feet across, and there's a great video online showing somebody actually being lowered down into here. Tremendous. These days, uh, it's been called or renamed the Shining of Karakum. A lovely name. Now, one field has multiple locations. So, as you can see here, this field, Barracuda, is found in several countries. Uh, these are fields or discoveries, and they occur in Brazil, Trinidad, Tobago, Spain, Sri Lanka, Peru, Egypt, and Nigeria. And these are the corresponding trove entries for each of those. So you can see, if you want to find out about the Barracudas, there's a, a lot of information to be gleaned in all of these places. Different to Barracuda in Australia, which is a different fish. Other popular names, if you want to call your field Orca or Pelican, you'll find there's a lot of those worldwide. And best to try and avoid having similar names like Hotton and Hutton. It might be that uh, some of the crews end up getting on the wrong helicopter and going uh, to the wrong field. Play it again, Sam. And here we go off to offshore Spain and to the Casablanca field. Well, it's Ranger Oil featuring again, and back in 1971, Ranger applied for five exploration permits offshore Spain. Now, the, most of them were named after Mediterranean seaside cities, and here's some of them, and some of them are actually shown on that map. But the fifth was named Casablanca, and it was a restaurant that the geologists used to visit on their field trips. In turn, the restaurant was named after the movie, um, so there's an unusual naming convention. Is it a bird? We're back in the UK North Sea and this time with buzzard. Are these named after birds? Buzzard, golden eagle. Here is the uh, the buzzard complex. At the time of writing it's the biggest producing field in the UK North Sea. Well no, in fact these fields are all named after pubs in South East England, bar one. And that is the uh, the Buzzard Bar, which is actually located in downtown Calgary. It was called Buzzard Bar. It's uh, now known as uh, Bottle Screw Bill's Pub, but there is still a uh, Buzzard Bar within. So uh, it's not just the Buzzard Bar that's changed names. On this one in particular, there's a number of companies have, have changed uh, changed hats. It's uh, Pan Canadian became Encarna, Nexa, and Seanook, and uh, the rumor is that Seanook might be putting their assets up for sale at this time. In the land down under, so if we nip on over to uh, Australia, well, we kind of like this one, and it's Woolly Butt, ENI's Northwest Shelf oil field. So, um, a Woolly Butt, by the way, is, uh, it turns out, is a, a tree in uh, native to Australia. So here's our candidates again, rolled out. We're pretty sure that there must be more, so have a think about it. Drop them in the comments below, and uh, we'll see if we can't come up with a, a finalised, better list for this. Thanks ever so much for listening, and please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring the bell, and if you want to get in touch, there's our details. Thank you very much.